my name is Tracy Wingard, and this is my, my partner in crime here, Kelly Borg. And we're going to have our own little, we don't think we need the microphone system in here, so we're pretty loud. And we're going to be wearing this. We're kind of trying to, to model some things for our own district. And so we're actually recording ourselves when we present to take back with us. We've, we've done it before, and we're hoping this one comes out because we had something with a little battery or mic issue last time, so it didn't work very well. So we're hoping. If you've never seen it's a swivel, so it'll actually it'll track us. So as we move, it'll move with us and tape. So got a built-in microphone. It's pretty nice. So that's what we've got. So occasionally you'll see us pass this thing back and forth as we talk. That, that's what we're doing. Um, if you want to get a hold of us for any reason, our contact information is up here, our emails, our Twitter handles. Um, scan it if you want, QR code. If you have something you don't want to ask in front of everybody, feel free to use our back channel up there, goo.gl. Happy uh, to. Sorry. Is it not? Well, it's, uh, it's just open to organizations. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, and that's because it's a Sorry, we have uh, two of them going. You could have asked him an embarrassing question, but great. <laughs> that would have been perfect. We love that. Um, good morning. Come in, guys. Good morning. Tracy and I have. Um, um, I guess experimented now with this a couple different times. We presented at the Minneapolis Ties Conference, and we've been to a couple up in Northwest Iowa as well. And, um, we want to try to send a message today that technology and PE really can blend together, and this can be a really awesome thing for your kids, as I have found out from that side of it. Um, it's been awesome. So, yeah, Tracy will be the technology guru here, and I'll share it from you from the PE side of it what it's really meant to myself and my students, and uh, take it from there, so, okay? Yeah, I can do that. Um, just a little bit about myself. We always like to share a little bit about ourselves, and um, we're from the Lamar's District, which is up in Northwest Iowa, and um, I'm the health and fitness, te fitness teacher in the high school. Um, it's all 912, and um, I'm also in the classroom teaching health as well, um, so I kind of have that mixture going on. Um, my wife, Kathy, um, is also in education. She teaches high school art. Um, and she's actually here today, so we're probably the most nervous. We don't want to mess up. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, my two kids, Jeremy and Taylor. Um, Jeremy's actually studying to be a pastor right now. He's in Michigan, and my daughter um, was married here a couple years ago, expecting her first child in December, so um, being labeled grandpa. Not sure I'm ready for that yet. Um, we always like to share something really cool, um, and my students think this is kind of neat. Um, but I actually have worked for NASCAR for about 13 years as a racing instructor, so I sometimes jump on an airplane on Friday, fly to a speedway, turn laps at 190 miles an hour, and show up to class on Monday, and the kids get pretty excited about that. So it's kind of a cool thing to, to share with them. And, uh, win, o win over some of those kids, I guess. <laughs> and my wife, Kathy, is the elementary tag teacher in our district, my, my boy Zachary and Caden. Mars is the ice cream capital of the world legislated, home of Wells Blue Bunny ice cream. Um, my oldest boy is on the high school tennis team, and they actually finished the state runners up last year, which was kind of cool as a freshman. We got into a little argument one night, and uh, I was trying to be a little more than dad and be a little more of a coach with him, trying to point some things out. And at one point, he turns and goes, Dad, I'm a freshman in high school. I'm earning my second varsity letter. How many did you earn as a freshman? <laughs> First of all, I went to a 4A school, not a 3A, and the answer is zero. Um, Proud graduate of Iowa State University. Uh, I also do. <laughs> I also do some instruction for uh, Texas Instruments. And my kind of cool thing, but it's not exactly NASCAR cool, is that with my uh, compatriot at school, he and I started our, our robotics club. And so last year was our first year as instructors for the robotics team. And we actually qualified for state and didn't make it to super regionals. But Rockwell Collins liked us enough that they asked us to come and be ambassadors on their behalf. And so out of the 48 teams, they invited two of us, and we came over. Uh, tour guides for them. So we toured around congressmen, representatives, engineers. The people from Rockwell Collins liked us so much they invited our kids to come back and they got a private tour of Rockwell Collins. And so sometimes if you see me, if you want to see some really cool pictures of some of the stuff they're doing, of the stuff they let me take pictures of, they are doing some really cool stuff uh, at Rockwell Collins. So kind of getting back to what we're kind of here for is kind of how did we start? Uh, our district is not a one-to-one -one district. Number-wise, as far as devices, we are just about no, one to one. I want to say we have in the ballpark of just under a thousand iPads in our district. The majority of those are in the elementary schools. Uh, we have mostly laptops in our middle and high school. I think we have a rogue 
oh, six teachers in our middle school, high school that have iPads. That's, otherwise, they're all Windows-based PCs. Um, we're not bringing your own device. We're, we're not promoting that either. Um, what we are doing is this. For the last two years, teachers have had the opportunity to apply for uh, tech grants. And so they, the school board set aside $150,000, and teachers can write up what do you want, why do you want it, what are you going to do with it, what are the kids going to do with it, how are you going to measure its effectiveness. And then the superintendent and the IT department sit down and hash <coughs> out who got what out of the 150. We also have another organization called LEAP, the Lamar's Education Enhancement Project. Um, I like to call it PTO for the entire school district for academics. And teachers send requests to them for things that either the district won't buy or they bought out of their own pocket, and a lot of times they'll reimburse it. They chucked in another ten, fifteen thousand dollars each year. And so this is how this journey for us began. I went to a conference in Minneapolis, the Tiger <coughs> Conference. If you've never been to it, I highly recommend it. Daryl Salome was presenting, and this would have been two years ago, three years ago. And this is what he presented on with these heart rate monitors and what he was doing with his kids in the elementary schools. And I just was kind of awestruck by it and taken back about, oh my gosh, this is right up Kelly's alley. And so I came back and started telling Kelly about this, that we have got to write up one of these tech grants for you. I said, you, you got to look into this. This is, this is exactly in your wheelhouse. <coughs> and so that's literally what we did. Uh, we kind of did some Google research. We got on Skype and had some, some time uh, online with some different representatives from Heart Zones. Uh, you know, we had several phone calls with some of these people talking about, okay, hey, will it do this? How does it handle this? And when we got done, Kelly was just as impressed as I was. And so we wrote up a grant and Kelly got it. And he got the full-blown system. And somebody's probably gonna ask me pretty soon how much did it cost us. And I wanna say in the ballpark of five to six grand yep. was the cost to completely set up his, well, what he's got. And so what that got us is he got him an iPad. Everything runs off of an iPad, the software does. Um, it got him 38 of these, they're called Skosh Blink heart rate monitors. Grab we'll these. be passing these around a little bit, you guys, and also, Giving you an opportunity to put them on and actually see how the system works. So and so, I am not an expert by any means. I have just enough down to be dangerous. But they've got these little blinking lights in the back. Uh, what they do is they actually measure the blood flow into the skin. That's how it works. <coughs> and so the, the two main ways blood gets forced through your body is movement and the heart. Um, and apparently, it's a big deal that there's two colors on here because that <coughs> deals with the different pigments of skin. So darker skin versus lighter skin. That's apparently a really big deal, I guess. And so literally, you could wear them like a watch. Um, the recommendation is usually to have kids wear them more up here, almost like a brachial pulse type situation. Uh, Kelly started out with 30 of them. 30. 30 of them. Within two weeks, he had so many kids get added to his class. He had his two sections that he had. He had to go ask for six more because he was saying, I can't take any more. I don't have any more monitors. They said, how many do you need? He goes, I need six more. Done. We'll pay for them. He gets six more. And then second semester, um, you guys, I got to cut my classes off at 36. I can't. I don't have any more heart rate monitors. I, you can't put 38 kids in there. We'll buy you two more. So they keep funding these. And they're roughly, when we bought them, I would say in bulk, we probably got them for around 80 bucks a pop. And when you had to buy them one or two at a time, probably 100 bucks a pop would be my, my full heart estimate again for those. Um, but that's the that's how they work. You know, there's no, uh, there's no face on them. They're, they're, so there's no text messaging. There's no visual other than a blinking light. We'll, we'll explain a little later what that's going to do for you. Uh, the, the software, the, or the, the big board as we kind of call it, uh, that's what Kelly displays up on a television or you can spray it off with a, a projector. Uh, and so the kids can see the, the different pieces of information. That's kind of a, a, a big deal, the software part of it. Whereas he can have an entire class of stuff sprayed up there and know their names don't have to be up there so they do get to be anonymous. So nobody, you can if you want, but you don't have to. Um, you can make it with numbers. That, that's a really a big, big deal. That, that's huge for this. That's what, and, and one of the things in our minds that makes it better than say, just going to Best Buy and buying a, a Fitbit or a Garmin or whatever. Uh, another kind of big plus with their software package is it works over AMP Plus. And the big deal is that means it's not proprietary. So for instance, uh, I got my other kid, my kid runs cross country too, so I started learning a little bit because I didn't run cross country as a kid. So I started learning Garmin is big in the cross country world. Polar, I mean, is big in the cross country world. If you're a, if you're a serious runner, you probably have a Polar watch of some kind. That's a closed system. Polar only works with Polar equipment. These guys, any, they'll work anything that's AMP Plus based, you can use it. Um, right now, Apple's actually working to adjust how their uh, Apple Watch will send information so that it can be used with this. Because right now, what it, the Apple Watch does not do, and I'm not a genius at this, just, I'm just regurgitating information that I was told when I asked. It does not send a continuous signal, it's an intermittent signal. Um, and so they're, they're working on some workaround trick for it. And so that's what, uh, 
you can use other people's devices with their software. Now, we're not gonna lie, but we haven't done it yet. We just not needed to. Uh, these things, these WASP, or they're called bridges, and basically what they do is the information that comes out of this, it can't be understood by the iPad. So essentially what those things do is they take the information and translate it back into a way the iPad can understand it. And so we don't need two of them in this room. We could get away with one. We just did it to make sure because we didn't know how much interference there would be at a tech conference. So I got one sitting up here. Uh, there's one back there. They're working off of kind of a, a master servant situation. I got to look at the blinks. Yeah, the one in the back is the one running the show. That's the, the master. Um, we have a gymnasium of three basketball courts, and we get away with two of them in there to give perspective on how big. Um, our weight room, though, we usually end up we put three just to play it safe when Kelly's in there because there's so much equipment. It does work partially off of line of sight, and so we always want to make sure we got plenty of, of bounce around signal just to make sure everything's covered pretty safely. Um, the, the way we honestly got started, and Kelly will be the first to admit, um, he's not always comfortable with technology, so for him to take this leap was kind of a big deal for, for, for him. Uh, and so the stuff got shipped in, and it immediately came to, to my office. My current title is Technology Instructional Coach. This is my third year of doing this. Kelly and I have known each other for 20 some years. We just, by literal pure coincidence, his, first, his second year at his first teaching job was my, ended up being my first year at that school. And then I went to a different district and, and he left and went different ways and son of a gun, if we don't come back together 10 years later, by pure coincidence, the same school district. And we've always lived about 10 miles apart from each other by pure coincidence. And so just been good friends, so it's, it's been a nice little, uh, marriage of technology and PE. I took all this stuff back to my office and I went through this and said, I gotta know this inside and out because if, if I can't answer every question he's gonna ask me, he's gonna wanna bag on this quick. He is, it's gonna be hard for him to stick with it if he has too many difficulties. And so I did, I started my office and trying to learn everything. Can I run this without reading stuff? Can I do it with my eyes closed? Um, can we take it outside? Because that's something Kelly wanted to do with his kids is he goes out on the football field with them and uses that space. And so we, we took it outside and honestly, it epically failed. We would take it out and we, we were supposed to, we were told we could cover about 40 yards with these things. And so we took one and we laid one down to 50 and we laid one somewhere else. And we started seeing, okay, how far away can we get? How much ground can we cover with kids out here? What's gonna work? And we couldn't even get five yards. And I was frustrated. Kelly, Kelly would get frustrated. We're, we're on the phone with these guys and they've been fantastic. It's, their support has been tremendous. Uh, this poor guy was in a, the guy we're on the phone with, he's in Georgia and he's in the parking lot with, of, of his building, you know, trying to copy what we did. And they have learned along the way with some of the issues we had. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he cringed every time he saw my number, but they've learned a lot. So for instance, we found out that these don't work so good when you lay them down like this, you need them upright like this. And so that's when we invented uh, what we now use out in the field, uh, went to Walmart and bought portable toothbrush holders and went to the garden section and found these great big, I'm not a plant even, sorry. A big wire that comes up and then spirals around. I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. Not what is. All I know is it was cheap, it was thin, it was sturdy enough. Uh, because the toothbrush holder fit in that pretty good. Well, we ended up taking that off, we ended up cutting it off, yeah. Uh, duct tape the toothbrush holder onto it because these things work awesome if we had them upright. This jams into the toothbrush holder, the big plant thing. We jam one at the 50, we jam one at about 10 yard line, 15 yard line on each and we can cover the entire football field with three of these. And the kids can be out in the grass anywhere and it covers the entire, it picks everything up. Does it go 360? Yes. Yes, it does. The only thing it doesn't do awesome is it covers the grass of the football field awesome. It'll cover the straights on the track pretty good. Mm -hmm. Once the kids get out in, that's why I use this picture, once they get out in here on the curve, they started dropping off, they started getting too far out. We've got two uh, little range extenders they were, they were cheap too. I wanted them 30 bucks a piece, maybe 20 bucks a piece on Amazon. We tested them real quick once in the office. We've never taken them outside yet. It just hasn't presented itself. But it's what we think that's gonna be, that'll kick us out so we can do the entire, so for, when kids are on the track, we can even cover the whole track with just those three monitors. And, and we were also told that if we would purchase even one more of these and space them out more, we, we could get the, full. get the coverage in. Yeah. Yeah. So do those just work for distance? Does it matter how many you have on a system? Or they said you could have a class of 50, 60, 70 kids in there. Okay. Yep. So I'm at 40 and have zero issues. And we, we just want to be, first of all, we don't be honest. We don't work for hard zones by any means, okay? We're just two guys at Lamar's Community Schools, but we've had such a positive experience. The only reason we learned about it was because some guy went to a conference and talked about what was happening in his classroom. And so we're just kind of trying to spread the love, if you will. 
and share our experience with other teachers. And so by no means was it smooth to start with. And we spent a month, and there was more than once we looked at each other and went, what have we done? What have, you know, I'll tell you what though, once we got through that first month and got, not only on our side of it, Flat will admit that company had some software issues they had to work through in it. And there was times they actually took us off the, uh, the downloaded software. We got a special engineer's version of the software, which meant whenever the engineers were working on that software package, if they made an update, it uploaded, we got it immediately, not the official Apple release stuff. So there was times our software updated three times a day as they worked on different things. Uh, we started actually getting no engineers with first names, which I guess is kind of cool. Not a NASCAR tool, but cool. Um, <laughs> But I'll say that once we got through that first month, it's been really good. It, it's been fantastic. Uh, and the routine, I'm gonna let Kelly talk about this because this is starting to get more in his world. Yeah. 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 Um, I know that you know we've tried to evolve this a little bit to make sure that we're we feel like we're doing the best job for you guys. And Tracy's incredible at technology, and I have leaned on him. He has monster shoulders because he's right when he said. Initially, I was pretty scared and nervous because I knew without him, I didn't think I could probably do this. And um, he, he's just been fantastic. But he's taught me, and I've had big ears and became a sponge. And uh, I, I'm not intimidated with it at all now, as long as it works. <laughs> but when we have a little, maybe a wireless issue at school, for example, and it goes down for a little bit, then that ultimately kind of kiboshes this for a while. And very rare, but it has happened. But otherwise, it's very smooth. It's, it's easy to run. Um, you know, and in the background of a room like this, whether we have eight people in here or 50 as we've had, uh, there's administrators, there's PE teachers, there's technology people, there's instructional coaches, so we kind of have a mix. So I'm going to kind of do my part to, I think, explain how it's been on the PE side of it a little bit and make that connection with technology. Um, this has been unbelievable for my students. And so we create this routine where the students come in, um, they essentially, we have a hallway um, down a long corridor that heads to our fitness center. And we just have a station set up of the watches um, in their container, the bands, the wristbands that the kids use um, to attach the watch to their wrist. They put those on, they turn them on, and they walk right to the fitness center. So by the time, this is just in a matter of probably two minutes, the kids are walking down the hallway, they've got their watch on, they walk into the fitness center, and I already have this, and we're gonna show you what it looks like in a second. I already have this loaded up. And as you can see in this picture, that iPad's actually sitting right there. Um, it's connected to that large, it's a real large TV monitor. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty good room there, so I'm a ways away from that in that picture. So when they come in, it's immediately starting to download their data. It's collecting that information. So when they start their warm up, I mean, it's, it's already starting to build that information for the student. So that happens pretty fast. How can I cut them? Go ahead. You did. Yep. Kelly spared no expense. <laughs> our, our school district. I have to go there. And so this is going to seem stupid. This is actually a genius move. And so there's two sizes of bands, medium, small, medium, large. And actually, I can bet I've counted ten kids who've worn the medium maybe this year. It, it's it's pretty tight. Almost everybody wears a large size band. But the genius of this is, is what the kids do. So they come and they, they get their ba their band. They put it back in the day. Kelly zips this up and throws it in the washing machine. So it, I mean, it seems kind of silly, but it, it's actually quite effective. And then. You know, his organization, he got to decide what he wanted to get. To a fishing his, tackle box. A fishing tackle box, but it works perfectly for what he's doing. I mean, it fits, everything fits into a backpack. He literally grabbed, here's your back, yeah, here's your little backpack. First day of school. Um, literally, everything fits in a backpack. Kelly throws it all in here, and this is his entire package of what he's carrying around to and from the fitness zone, the locker room, whatever. And then there's a charging system for this as well. Um, and so every watch, um, and the bridges all have a little charging system. It's all plugged in through USB. So at the end of the day, literally two to three minutes, everything's plugged back in the next day I come back. Um, but the watch life of the batteries is a full week. I mean, literally use them all day, they'll last for a week. It's, it's awesome. The bridges, you do have to charge daily. But, but that's, pretty, that's pretty nice. So. Yeah. These guys, if you're gonna use them all day, they highly recommend leaving them plugged into a wall. So it's just a micro USB plug-in. Um, yeah, we have another teacher that's now using them starting this year, and she's got it. It's it set up for her place. She's got an outlet right under where she does it, so we just she's got Velcro on the back of hers. Just Velcro it onto the wall, plug it in, and it stays. These give you, they say, about two hours of life if you're going to use them nonstop. So that's what I say. If you can leave them plugged in, leave them plugged in and give them juice the entire time. So what, just curious, what do you do when you're out at the football field? Just take them out, take them back in, and plug yep. them in? And, and for me, 
uh, my end of it is I teach two classes and the rest of the time I'm in the health classroom. The other teacher teaches six. If she's gonna take these outside, that is gonna present that issue. And we're gonna test it and see how long we can go and if the 10 or 15 minutes in between classes give them that little bit of charge, it, that's gonna carry it through, I don't know. We're gonna work through that part of it. So, yeah. The fitness center and the gym isn't an issue with having outlets available, but. Sure. Yeah, how much right those are? 30 bucks? Uh, say that again? These, these little guys here? No, those are 80, right? But the other. I'm not that sure little on guy, those. I want, I'll bet this is in the ballpark of 400. Oh, so it's, a piece? if you bought a, yeah. if you bought like a cell phone, those little, mini charger things and you could be able to do that if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Take a little portable pad. Yep. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. I have this system at my school and that's when I go outside I bring a portable one and I just stick it in just my bag in and it charges while I'm out there. You have hard zones too? Yes. Yep. yes. Okay. Okay. Is that awesome. enough to keep them going? Yep. Okay. Awesome. Sorry, right awesome. Perfect. Well, I'm, I'm, gonna... I'm so glad I came. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like the cheap one. Like, I bought like a $40 or $50 truck, like a nicer one. Like, just those little like, Who cares? It worked. I'll check out line one. I'm just laughing because, like, my, my theory is whenever I go to a conference, as long as I walk away with one new thing, one new idea, one good idea, it was worth the coming. I'm going, sweet, it's 821. I already got it. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had somebody that said they've even seen Heart Zones. That's no, awesome. No. Thank you. Yeah. I want to just briefly touch on a few things that what I feel it's done for me in the program and make that technology connection. Um, and then we want to show you a few little videos um, just to give you a little background. So a lot of different things going on. This is one little area of the fitness center and clear on this side is a whole bunch of the cages for weightlifting and all this kind of stuff. But today they were doing the circuit training. So there's about 25 more kids on this end. We're making a big old circle. Music's going. Um, they're, they're doing a circuit for say 45 seconds. And as they're doing that, they're checking up here, they're looking at that TV screen. Um, again, the students see a number. Um, I see their name on the iPad. So when I take a look at the iPad and see the class here, I can see their name. But the students will see a number. Um, and that is able to correlate. And I think the next screen is a closer shot, isn't it, Trace? So like when, when a class is going on, for example, and they're doing their training, whether it's circuit training, weightlifting, um, a, a team sport game, whatever class I'm in, uh, this is some of the information that they're able to see in that bigger picture. Their calories burned, uh, the number of points that they're earning, their current heart rate, uh, which training zone they're in, and that's also based on the color. As you see some blue, some yellow, and some red. Um, we'll talk just briefly about that. Um, so their box is changing colors, and that's awesome for them from a distance as they can just get that correlation that, oh crap, I'm in the blue, I better pick it up a little bit. Um, and they're able to do that from a distance. Um, it also is telling them how much time they've spent in each training zone, which is pretty cool. Um, and then if you want to go to another level, it's also scoring points for the, uh, for the students. So uh, the blue, which is the lower zone, Yellow's kind of middle of the road, we'll say, at this point in the game anyway. Red being the higher training zone, they're scoring more points for being in the red than they are in the blue, for example. So you can set it up to grade your students if you want to, um, if you get comfortable with that. Um, this is taking a look individually at what the students' data would look like. As you'll see, literally a minute-by-minute minute graph um, going all the way through that training session. This is showing them how much time they spent in each one of the training zones. And again, that little bigger screenshot that they're able to see right here. Another cool thing about this is at the very end of class, when you close the session out um, and we end it, it asks you if you want to generate an email. We click yes every day after we store the data. And then every student gets that email of their summary. Um, and we do that with all of our high school classes. And so they get it at the end of every class, and then I'm also getting it put into my Dropbox, which I can go back any class period, any student. We just had parent-teacher conferences last week, and I've never had this. And a teacher said, can I see what my kid's been doing? I hear about these watches. Can you show me? And I'm like, yeah, I, I can. And I kind of got excited. And I was able to go back and click on every class that that student had did and show them this. And they wanted to see that, and I thought, well, that's I could have said before, uh, yeah, they've been doing great. You know, that's all I had to go by. Now I can show them, yeah, here's what they've been doing. That was kind of exciting for, for both of us to do that. Okay. Question, how do you get the student's name and or number into the system? <laughs> so, 
Um, there, there's, a, there's different ways to do oh, sorry. <coughs> Nice. <laughs> I'm so getting in trouble. It, everything hooks into a Dropbox account and it sets up with two different uh, Excel spreadsheets. That's how the system is designed to work. And so I take his class roster at the beginning of the school year, quick, dump them out, put them in the format that I need, toss them in, and, and I can, we can show you in a minute too if you, if you want one. Figure I got things. I might have one here, so I'll go to your Dropbox and show it. But it's literally just an Excel file. That's all it is. So does how it, does the watch know that this is done? Oh, again? every uh, oh. so. Can we just switch that? Show how you send to a watch real quick. So when he goes logs into a goes into a class, uh, we got two different teachers that are set up right now. And so Kelly goes into his class. Oops. And so eight periods, semester one, section A. Every <coughs> kid is assigned a unit. And so when he starts six period, it automatically knows these are the only kids in that class. So you could have multiple kids that use watch two as long as they're in different class periods. So Harley needs to always pick up unit number two. Yes. Okay. Yep. No, it's a good question. Yep. I'm assuming unit number two will be in the same spot. When they're looking at the screen, they know I'm always bottom left or second to the left. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then a bigger space, that's exactly what they do. Right. Yeah. And so the whole I want to touch that point thing because Kelly was really <laughs> clever about this. He kind of just came up with this on his own one day. The way the points work, it's how long you spend in each zone. So if the red oh jeez. I guess I shouldn't complain because we had a projector earlier that wouldn't do HDMI, so. Boy, I really wants to do that HDMI now. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come back. There we go. Here we go. So, every minute you spend in the red zone, you get five points. Every minute you spend in the yellow, you get three. Every minute you spend in the blue, you get one. And that was his setup? No, that's the way the point goes. That's, that's the default. Okay. And it actually takes it a step farther and breaks it up into that. If you're on the low end of the yellow, like down here, it might be two points. It might be three in the middle. It could be four if you're at the top of the yellow. And then you can create a max for the red too. So it's not just five. Okay. You can go five, six, seven. You know, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, we didn't catch that at first either. Pretty soon one day a kid sat here and looked at, his, looked at the screen and did the math and went, okay, five times 11, 55, three times eight, 24, 79, plus 80. How do I have 108 points? I should only have about 80. We, we might, I don't know either. I'm with you, kid. <laughs> we had to dig so into that. we called them up and they explained us. Oh, that makes total sense now. Or, or finally, when a kid asked us, well, what happens if I'm, you know, here's what these numbers here on the left are showing you. These are the cutoffs. How do I get between blue and yellow? That's 110. That this one says so. If a kid's heart rate hits 110, it flips you. You're in the next zone. Your heart rate hits 140. You're in the next zone. And so the kid would ask, well, what if I'm, you know, at 109? What if I'm at? What do I get for points? And that's when we started figuring out. Oh, it actually does do. So we we explained the kids partial credit. So to speak, they kind of like that. The explanation made sense to them. So are those zones totally changeable same? for every single kid in okay. every single class? So you do like some kind of pre-testing to determine <laughs> maximum and minimum heart rate and yeah. Well, they, so they come as a default from the beginning, and that's exactly what it is: is 80, 110, 140, and then they give you these tests that you can do for your kid. One of them is literally called the heart, "How hard can you breathe?" test, and they have you like jog in the gym for two minutes and then. How hard are you breathing? It was, we tried it and we were just kind of lost. Like, well, I don't know if this is working at all. And so what Tracy ended up doing was figuring out that in the manual explains another way to do this, where you literally just bring the kids in, put their watches on for probably three, four weeks and let them train. Let them do their thing, do their workouts. <coughs> and then at the end of that four weeks, he can just go in and pull their maximum heart rate that they've ever had in the class that plugs into a formula that it actually it does it in here, and then it creates these cutoffs all on its own, but you can still manually do it. Yeah, right. We can literally just click, you know the boxes that you saw before on that big screen? Yeah. Just literally right here on the iPad, hit it, that student comes up, and we can literally just take those numbers and just slide them, move them at will. 
So you're doing like this four weeks of regular PE activity, or are you doing kind of specific kind of fitness testing? Mixture of everything, just totally a mixture from circuit training to weightlifting to team sport. Just let them do their thing. They don't even know the test is going on. Otherwise, they may try to yeah. work harder, work less. Yeah. Or, they'll, you they'll, know. they'll dog, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, if, I, yep. if I'm going to get great on improvement, I'm going to make sure I dog that first one. Yeah. So that even <laughs> if I really know the stuff, I'm gonna, my improvement's going to be awesome. Um, when they first put these on, they think these are so cool. It's like a video game with them. Can I get my, can I get to the, get red, can I get to the yellow? And so they work their tails off, especially in the beginning, because they want to try to keep it up there. They so probably go the wrong data. way. Yeah. 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 It's probably a little too hard to be blunt. And that's what's neat about this. And I'll just, uh, I, I need to mention that. That's what's really cool about this is, People always ask, well, how is it, is this, whether it be the athlete or the non-athlete, for example, does it benefit one? Is it harder for one? How's that work? That's what's cool about that part of it is it like itemizes that watch just for that person. So if we were going to do an activity, it might be easier for you than it is me, and the watch balances all that out. Even from yeah. class to class period, from student, like yeah. the same watch is used. Yeah, yeah. because what'll happen is, say that watch number two you talked about, let's say this is an, this is, you're in first period, second period, third period, Every time I put that watch on, it's my settings. Right. So the watch isn't programmed, it's the person. It's a profile. Yeah. 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 Perfect. It's like, log, it's, it's like logging into your computer at school. It doesn't care which device you logged into as long as it has your username and ID. You talked about at the end of the class, like checking it out or whatever. Is that how you switch from class to class? You have to every time say this class is over. You have to end the session and literally Let's it's such as cut to it. It's cut to zero. Okay, perfect. <laughs> the, the, the square stop, <laughs> boom, you just hit it. You want to stop the session? Yes. Do you want to save the data? Yes. Do I want to send the email? Yes. And that's literally it. And then all I got to do is open up the next class, you know, period three. And the new student list and roster comes up. And is the email part of that Excel? Sheet that you uploaded or? what the kids get is they get a PDF is what it sends them but how does the email actually get in so get in, in that profile I put in all their that's part of the addresses. Excel that you upload that's part of what I do for him one okay. of my one of the benefits of me being his buddy <laughs> but that's not separate I, mean, I, I would be the one to set it up too so I'm so just asking if I have to if it was Kelly world. like he talked about being able to sliders or just doing if it was Kelly's world that is how Kelly would adjust everybody to the slider I'm like that is foolish dude You're right. give me the formula I get Excel spreadsheet I got the heart rate that I need here it's like a nine, it's like 90, 80, 70, 90 percent, 80 percent, 70 percent of your maximum heart rate. It's what determines those thresholds. I'm gonna pop it into a quick <coughs> cell phone and drag it down and copy it in every cell and let it send the information out for me, as opposed to going on the iPad and moving it one at a time. No, right? Are you kidding me? I'm a math guy. We'll spend two, two weeks figuring out a way to do something in ten minutes. Plus, they sent out like 20 videos of how to set everything up, like stuff. Perfect. They get videos now? Yeah, Are you kidding me? I got a Dropbox folder with like 20 tutorials. Are you there kidding you me? We didn't get videos. <laughs> well, every time you call, they're like, oh, we need to make a video. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that was one of our suggestions. <laughs> they were, they've been super responsible. We give them suggestions about stuff. They've been amazing. I have yeah, their um, support guys. Support guys. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right back to you. <laughs> so everybody can laugh at this, but the way I explain kids on how to put these on now, I've gone through many iterations of this. We literally, I literally have kids. Right through here. I tell them, Make the letter U out of this and put the Velcro on the outside. Yep. And now, now you take your watch and slide, that's how you put this on. Now you slide it through here. And just put it somewhere up here on your upper forearm somewhere. And your arm goes through the big hole you just made. I know it seems kind of elementary, but my wife's so proud. Channeling my inner elementary teacher. I to put this kind of on the inside here. Do you find if it works better in uh, For my kids, it works. It doesn't work on the. I've got. I use elementary kids. Okay. And they use okay. it right here. And it picks up better on it, that. it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you get your wife? Yep. I'm good. Cal, do you want me to just randomly pick? Yeah, pick any class. class. Okay. What, what's, it's probably going to have a lot bigger yeah. display because it's going to show one of my classes that's by 36 kids or whatever. Yeah, so this is literally what Kelly sees when he starts it. It says, hey, what monitors do you want to use? Because they've got monitors for cycling, they've got all kinds of monitors you can use with this thing. Heart zones, boom. Okay. And one of the things that we had to tell the kids initially too was because someone will be like, it's not working, the watch isn't working. Well, you guys are all sitting now. So if you don't get above that 80 beats a minute, that doesn't even start recording data or doing anything, nothing even moves. So I'm going to ask you guys to stand up.
move around. Yeah, I don't care how many jumping jacks you want to do or sit-ups. You're going to what? If you move around, you want to even hop around a little bit and get the blood flowing. You'll see your uh, your box starts to change colors. Who are we? Oh, whatever. Devin F. No, see, these are names. So, oh, wait, one, two, three. Yeah, they look. He has it. Yep, absolutely. He has it. I've got it set up so that you guys can see what Kelly sees. Sick. Sick. Here. Oh, you should be back. We'll make it so that you see what the kids see. Oh, there we go. That's what the kids see. Oh, there we go. <laughs> You're dead. I'm so low. It's ridiculous. I would have to probably do this in about an hour to get to move. <laughs> It's, it's, and we do this on the first day with our kids. I actually take them in the classroom, and then we actually do this, so they get a get a taste of it, and they kind of see how it works before we even even go in the gym at all. But um, yeah, again, this is what the students see. So they see the number. Is this what your display will look like for your kids? Yep, same thing. Well, mine has their names on there. So. Okay. Yep. And, and uh, here's the thing: we just put it on the number to feel like we're just doing that out of respect their privacy but by the time the yeah. second week yeah. of school is over everybody knows my watch number <laughs> i'm not afraid yeah, i'm too whatever you know they don't they don't care they really don't we just leave it on the number for our sake i guess right kind of covers our butts i suppose legally yeah but i know for me um while you guys have had a chance to see this work in a little bit what i really really love about this the connection that i've made and um, i think this is the cool part is the students now have that instant feedback that they never had before so they instantly know where they're at. Am I slacking a little? Am I not? Am I doing the things right? Am I where I need to be? And honestly, it drives them. You know, you used to feel like a little bit of a PE teacher doing that little prodding, like, come on, you know, you can do this or you can do a better job. And you were, you kind of felt like you were that motivator a little bit. Not that I don't keep doing that, but now it's like this took the place of that. And these kids, like, I mean, some days they walk out of there and I think they just left a two hour basketball practice. They are sweating and they're like, I'm like, holy buckets, you know, you really, you did a phenomenal workout today. Whereas I, I don't think they would have did this before. And that's what really gets me kind of going is I see that connection and what that's done for them. Um, plus it eliminates that whole competition thing, singling kids out and all that team pick, pick and junk and, you know, all that stuff we like to talk about, the horror stories. And this literally has become such a driving force for them. Um, and so I know our administrators love it. Um, I know our kids love it. I know our, us as PE teachers now have bought into it so much. And, and Kelly, you know, he's got his kids complete. They're completely bought in. You know, they're they're making purposeful efforts. They're trying to stay in the yellow training zone. or trying to stay in the red zone. You know, uh, he's even made games out of this silly thing. You know, we we sat down and he collected data and looked at the data and said, okay, what's a reasonable number of points for me to ask the kids to score in a class period? You know, almost gamifying his class, if you will. And so to get an A today, you've got to score 100 points. If you score this many points, you're going to get a B today. If you score this many, you're going to get a C. And he's gamified it. This is a video game of those kids. It's amazing. Um, I've, I've been in his classroom. They're playing volleyball. Somebody shanks the ball. It goes down the end of the court. The kids look up the screen. All of a sudden, you start seeing all these kids on, on a volleyball court doing this. <laughs> <laughs> they are waiting for the ball to come back to start again because they're trying to keep their heart yeah. rate up. Um, yes, they're yes. playing. They call it, it's a dot. They call it dog ball. <clears throat> and uh, these kids get out. And so they're waiting for their, somebody on their team to catch a ball, get themselves back in. And I'm watching these kids on the sideline, yeah. waiting to get back in. Just nobody told them to do it. It's they just came true. up with it on their own. I've never seen my kids move in a volleyball game ever huh. in my life, and I coach it in high school. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. You'd almost wonder, what are they doing? Because they are, I mean, some are just sitting there, and they're just, they're just doing this nonstop. And all of a sudden, oh, here's the ball, and they, oh, you better hit it. And then they're moving again. It's... It's amazing. It, it really, really is. So if this was up to Kelly, Kelly would double tap a kid. That's what they get in their email. That's exactly what they get right there. Um, you tap on the kid. You can manually change things. And so the, the biggest headache I honest to goodness have from, from my side of it, like you're talking about what you're going to have to do, is the majority of our kids' school emails are first name, dot last name, at lamarcsd.org. And so I go in, I go, uh, Concatenate, cell of first name, quotation mark, period, cell of last name, quotation mark, at Lamar CSD. You have, if you, out of the hundred and some kids you've got, out of the hundred and some kids Deb's got, so I'm doing 300 and some kids, there's a handful of 
emails that are funky, or a kid whose last name is like Tesla, T-E, space, S-L-A-A. -A. So it, it jacks the whole thing up because it, it doesn't know what to do when it pulls some of that. So I end up having to go back in and clean some of those things up. Right. But in the grand scheme of things, to clean that up is nothing compared to doing the way he would do it manually one at a time. Um, and, and he can go in and change those zones, and it will change up on that screen. So Which one are you going to move? I grabbed Shia because she on there right now. Yeah, she'd be on the yeah. bro. Which, which bar are you going to? Okay. So he's touching the screen. And I'm changing that. her That's values right now. And so... So if it gets, <laughs> if it gets sick, they're coming in there sick. Like, all right, I'm going to move your rate for today. Yeah. Will that change it? Will you have to go then back in and change it back? That's, yep. A, yep. that's yep. a safe change. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And you can set it up so either the changes get made on a computer or the changes get made on an iPad. You can tell it what you want to make the changes. It's, uh, it's offline right now, but that's you, you can just tell it what you want to do. The uh, the changes right here. I want to do all the I want to do all this manual on an iPad, or I want to do it from a computer. Gotcha. Um, as far as let's see the reports. I don't know which one grab. Let's pick one. So the fifth. You know, here's there's what his email looks like. So this would be the whole cluster of kids now from that one class period that I could go back and look at. at any or time. Kelly also <coughs> has, here's the class the summary, summary yep. the, the CSV file, Excel showing every single kid, um, how many calories they burned, how many points they earned, how many minutes, seconds they were in each zone, what are their cutoffs for each of those zones, what was their average heart rate, what was their maximum heart rate. And so that's what we go back. We go back and look at the data and then use that when we decide to personalize it. And we kind of usually end up like throwing out. We don't take the absolute highest heart rate they've ever had because we tried that and we found out that for some kids that really messes, it's just unrealistic to expect them that that one time their heart rate peaked at 240. And do you, you want to address the whole, what you used to think you knew? Oh, yeah. How many pe people in this room have taught PE before? Or, or currently are? Okay. Did you ever feel like when you looked across, across the classroom you knew instantly which kids were kind of slacking and loafing and which kids were working hard. You thought you knew. You're laughing. You know exactly what I'm going to say. <laughs> I used to think I was really good at that, not bragging, but I used to think I could look across the gym or fitness center of 35 kids and go, yep, slacking, working hard. So I thought I nailed it. And literally within two weeks, I told him, I'm like, oh my gosh, how wrong have I been? Because I, I just had this last week. There was a girl, uh, I would have thought, Miss Slacker, she's making it look good. And I look up, and she has literally been in the red more than the yellow. She was never even in the blue. And my picture across the room was she's not working very hard. But it's a non-athlete, never been involved in too much, never worked out. And she was working way above her ability. And then I look across the room and see the athletic kid that I know is on the basketball court, potentially going to college to play basketball. And I'm thinking, yeah, he looks like he's working pretty hard. And I look up, and he spent a lot of time in the blue. I thought I knew that. I thought I had that pegged. And now with this setup, the way it works, it, it has totally opened my eyes to that. I can't evaluate by looking anymore. I have to look at the data. And it has made such a monster difference in that. So I love that. How does your football program, your track program, use this? Because I, I see football, they're concentrating on learning plays, fundamental skills, and so forth. And that's so concerned with heart rates. But how do they use it? You know, our sports teams haven't really used this at all. Um, we've just used it in the classroom itself, but to, to kind of simulate that data, I guess, maybe, what it would be like in a classroom setting, that's where you have to be a little careful because, like, if I'm doing that circuit training where every kid's doing the same exact thing, now I can kind of pull all that together and see that better, the bigger summary of the whole group. But like if it's football practice or basketball you know, practice, this group might be doing this thing, this group's doing this thing, this group's doing this thing, that's all different. Like if I have a group of girls doing a core workout here, a group of girls doing a jump rope station here, this group of boys is weightlifting. If I look at the whole summary, I might go, geez, what happened? These heart rates were low. Well, it's because of what they were doing. So I've struggled through that part a little bit, I'll be honest. And I've also realized that you can't always just look at the screenshot and know if they were working hard or not. It might be what they were actually doing. But we haven't used it with our sports teams at all. And part of us, we're afraid, I, I, you know, I mean, we don't know exactly how the contact issues will be. I mean, we play some volleyball, we've done some things that way, but 
my wrestling coach at the schools wanted to use them, and I'm thinking, oh gosh, I just don't know what's going to happen if they start get hit hard. Is that going to break that watch? I mean, I don't know. And so track and cross country have track and cross country have asked, and I said, well, we'd love to, and I would be happy to, but can you do it in a smaller area because we have that issue with space and we're now if we can get it to cover on the track and be golden there then i would say yep bring your kids in let's do it and then hopefully this spring we'll be able to do that how well does it and maybe you haven't tried this how well does it work in in motion like if for example you're doing cross country mm -hmm. and the cross country coach is on his bike with yeah. his little toothbrush thing in his hand you know and you got all the other runners yep. in front of you you know how we've never done that okay we've never done the <laughs> The bridges in motion. In motion, yeah. Um, the kids in motion's fine, right. and you can walk around with the iPad on, on, on you know, the Apple Play or whatever, run around the gym, no big deal. But as far yeah. as these moving, you, his wheels are already turning. Thanks a lot. <laughs> no, I just, <laughs> I just got. If anybody's ever seen the movie McFarland USA, I just got this image yeah. in my head of Mort on the pink bike, yeah. with the kids on the track. The basket on the, on the front. Yes, the basket on the front. The cinder track. Well, we have a, we have a cin our, our old practice field has a cinder track. So I have this image of you on the cinder track on your bike <laughs> yeah. with your eighth grade class. The only way to find out. I'll see if I can do the multiple. Yeah, thanks. Doesn't the data catch up to the bridge though eventually? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, if they yeah. drop off, right. it's it's stored temporarily. And then whatever color whatever color is blinking on their monitor can still tell them what's on there. So okay. yeah, yeah, and we, we forgot yeah. to touch this. And so here's what the whole purple comment was. You've been waiting for an hour to catch on. <laughs> so we have the initial generation of these, and what what the deal is is these tie to the numbers you have set. So when this thing is blinking blue, you're in the blue zone. When this thing is blinking red, you're in the red zone. When this thing blinks purple, you're in the yellow zone. <laughs> Thus my, it's our teacher's work. <laughs> They're actually working on doing, making it so that it's, they, I guess they didn't realize that actually would be kind of a big deal to teachers, the fact that it wasn't blinking yellow. Uh, but actually when the first generation created them, you know, yellow, diode, yeah. blue diode, thus gets in purple. Something Kelly does a really nice job of it, talking about what these zones mean to the kids. And we just, this is a, a poster we've got in our gym, but you know, we, we talk about that blue zone being a, tr uh, a warm up cool down zone for the kids. And they also talk about, and it's not addressed on here on the poster is, but it literally talks about the fact that in the blue zone, you're burning more fat than you are carbohydrates. You're not burning a whole lot, but you're, you're burning. Um, and in that yellow zone, in that yellow zone, I said in that yellow zone, <laughs> trying to get a couple things clear here. Um, talking about, you know, now I'm working on my endurance a little bit, I'm gonna burn more fat, more carbohydrates than I am in the blue zone. Um, it's more of a, if I kinda wanna lose some weight, this would be a, a good zone for me to stay in. The blue zone, the description we read is that you're supposed to be able to stay in that comfortably for 60 minutes. If you're in this yellow zone, you're supposed to be able to comfortably stay in that for 30 to 60 minutes. And the red zone, as Kelly explained, you know, I want to become a better athlete. I want to be able to perform at a higher level for a longer period of time. So that's my goal. If you're really working that hard in this zone, you shouldn't be able to stay in more than probably 30 minutes at a max. And you're going to burn way more carbohydrates than you are fat in this zone. And so that's what, how Kelly pitches it to kids, and they fully buy in. Because you're athletes and you're not athletes. Yeah, it goes back to that girl I mentioned in that example, is now she knows I, I don't need to be in the red, you know? And so she knows she's successful in, in the yellow, and that helps, I think, to, to pull them into that a lot. Th this is a big quote that Kelly and I really like. Um, we, we always make sure we end with this. And it's um, by Beth Kirkpatrick. She's the Director of Education and Advocacy for Hard Delta. We don't care, we just have a quote. Um, we're prescribing exercise to groups of individuals when we should be prescribing exercise to individuals in a group setting. So for years, you know, we all, we're all in PE, we all do the same thing, we all expect the same thing, whereas you should be trying to make it meet each kid's needs. And that's what I think Kelly does a really nice job of, is trying to meet each kid's needs. So with that, we, uh, we're kind of ready to kick you out to go see George. But we do want to thank you for taking the time to come spend your morning with us. If you have any questions, don't be bashful to tweet, email, um, whatever. Happy to answer anything. Thank you for your time.